The Shanghai Motor Show and various company announcements have shown some trends in car design. The Overdrive radio program has reviewed the good, the bad and the ugly with our resident artist, Dean Oliver, and the observant, if not acerbic, transport expert, Brian Smith. Dean, you've always had what you call the 50 metre rule. Would you like to explain that to us? Well, David, I'm a child of the 70s, I suppose, and so I'm used to cars of that era where at, say, 50, 60, 80 metres or so, you could clearly tell the difference between them. You could easily tell the difference between a Ford and a a Chrysler and a a Mini and things like that. But as car design moved on through the through the 2000s or so, we got the jelly bean look and the aerodynamic look where cars tended to look a bit the same. And uh, say the length, half the length of a football field, it was pretty difficult to tell the difference between, say, a, you know, a Commodore and a Falcon and, and that kind of style. We mentioned uh, your rule, the 50 metre rule for determining good uh, or at least different style. We put that on the Facebook page, Overdrive City, and a reader did say that they were then driving down the highway and applying it to see whether it was fitting. The rule was good and see whether he could judge a car accordingly, but he found a very, very early Austin 7. So he found that that passed (laughs) more than the 50-metre rule. I think it passed the 300. Uh, Maybe that's like playing I Spy with My Little Eye as you drive. (laughs) (laughs) Brian, the other issue we've talked about in shape is whether... New technology may give us a greater freedom, not just physically, but almost permission to look different. Yeah, indeed. Uh, uh, That's one of the disappointments so far in uh, particularly electric vehicles is that um, they don't really need to have a conventional shape necessarily. They don't have a sort of a a, a necessary motor uh, sticking out the front of the car. And, And so, yeah, I think designers could be more adventurous and imaginative and try and reimagine how we might use a vehicle from scratch, you know, like reshape it. But I think what Dean's talking about with a 50 metre rule and the, and the sort of blurring of cars together, I, I think there's sort of a, a car design vernacular that we're stuck in of particular height and a particular length and relationship between dimensions that I guess ties the hands perhaps of some designers. Removing the need for a big, complicated internal combustion engine is one thing that may lead to a change of design, but more significantly, perhaps the removal of the radiator and the need for a grill could change the front of the car significantly. I completely agree. I think it's going to take designers a little while to come to grips with the fact that they've, they've now got much more freedom to, to design really quite different looking vehicles. There's another factor in play, which is, is safety. So a lot of the dimensions of a car, particularly at the front, are determined by pedestrian safety requirements. So, so you don't want a car that with a, a kind of a front that pushes somebody under the wheels or necessarily throws them in the air. So car bonnets now have to be fairly high to, so that pedestrian struck is, is sort of put onto the bonnet rather than, than thrown un, over or under the car. And so when you do with away with a radiator, you end up possibly with this very big, bland front of a car. So I, I think there's some design to be done to try to overcome some of those restrictions relating to safety. If you look at the cars that didn't have a radiator up the front, like a Volkswagen, it had a very, well, not chiselled, but drooping nose. It dropped down. Mm. And the Porsche 911 is an, another example of that. Some really great and distinctive design there. And I think it is going to take designers a little while to, to come to grips with the safety uh, issue as well. I mean, we don't want cars that are going to uh, sort of slice pedestrians in half. And yet we don't want yep. cars that are going to look sort of bulbous and uninteresting at all. And yet witness what you've just said about the Porsche and, uh, and the VW Beetle. The current trend has been towards more creases and angles and lines in a car, yet the Mazda 3 has come out with a more curvilinear type of approach. You would have to say it looks less angular than some of the recent cars that we've seen on the market? Yes, it's interesting what Mazda designers have done. It's still recognisably part of the, of the previous Mazda 3 line, but there's a challenge in that large rear section. 
Maybe I'm old-fashioned. It'll probably grow on me, and in 12 months' time, I'll be thinking, yeah, that looks good. I don't think they've done a lot. I mean, the, if you cover up the, the sort of halfway mark with your hand, it's, there's nothing different at the front of the car from any other Masters. But you're right about the back. It's, uh, it's sort of been lifted up more like a, a kind of a, a larger hatch kind of shape. But, you know, I don't think it's, it's more than incremental, the design change. So there it is, a review of some of the more unusual shapes appearing in car design. My thanks to Dean Oliver and Brian Smith for their perceptive comments. Dean and Brian are part of the Overdrive radio program that is also podcast on iTunes and Spotify. I'm David Brown. Thanks for listening. This was the first of a three-part series on how car design will change in the future.